So the Rajavans plead with DC to mind uh, the Turkish aggression. I'm not sure just how serious they will take this. By the way, this is a picture. This is from Rudal.net. This is a U.S. soldier stands guard during a joint patrol with Turkish troops near Garispi in September 2019. Yeah, it's all complicated. It's all complicated. So the story that we're going to be talking about is this one right here. <clears throat> Jeffrey to relay Kurdish fears of another Turkish incursion to Washington. <clears throat> this is from a Rajavan official. Erbil Kurdistan region, U.S. Special Envoy to Syria, James Jeffrey, told Kurdish leaders in northeast Syria that he would inform U.S. top officials of Syrian Kurds' fears of another Turkish military operation in the reg region a Kurdish opposition politician told Rudal <clears throat> on Wednesday. Let's get to a circumstance here. This basically is Rojava, roughly speaking. In various ways, some are more Rojava than others, I guess you could say. It's not like all of this is like a homogenous, contiguous, like some villages, there's differences, there's, and then, and then here is Afrin, kind of like the, uh, gateway in here. This is one of the gateways as well. <clears throat> Afrin is important to know. This is really the heart of Java right here. Heart of Java. Get a little bit more over here and you see a little bit more. And you see where the Turkish line is. And you see where Syria, within here is Rojava, on the main. <clears throat> but Afrin, I guess you could say, was kind of a Rojavan outpost. It was separated, but it was part of Rojava. This was a Rojavan-styled governance. They're using the, uh, in essence, they're using a form of municipalist, municipalism, I'll just say that. Uh, 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 fr fr primary, primarily was it Abdullah Asalan? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Yeah, Abdullah Asalan. So th this gentleman right here, <clears throat> Abdullah Asalan, also known as uh, Apo. short for both Abdullah and Uncle in Kurdish. <clears throat> He's a Kurdish. They say leftist, you know, really. Now, he did come from a pretty strong leftist tradition, but where he's operating now, it's it's really, it's, it's outside the parameters of what probably most of you think of as left and right these days. So he helped found the PKK in 1978, and uh, they do have some alleged and alleged, and uh, you... Uh, can decide the degree to which those alleged are true, but uh, at some point, basically, Osalon came to this point right here. Osalon now argues that the period of armed warfare is past and a political solution to the Kurdish question should be developed. Osalon's prison regime has os oscillated between long periods of isolation during which he has allowed no contact with the outside world and periods when he has permitted visits. In 2012, he was involved in negotiations with the Turkish government. From prison, Osalan has published several books. By the way, I ordered a book of his, and it, it never got here. I'm no, going no, to have to try again. Uh, uh, Osalan has published several books. Genealogy, also known as the science of women, is a form of feminism advocated by Osalan and subsequently a fundamental tenet of the Kurdistan Communities Union. And by the way, that is right here. That's the Rajavan symbol. You see that often associated with the Rajavans. It's a Kurdish political organization committed to implementing Osalan's ideology of democratic confederalism. Now, democratic confederalism comes from this municipalism, but uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm aligned in a lot of ways with democratic confederalism, and I actually am for America having a form of democratic confederalism. Now, I'm not really on board with feminism in general, with any of that, any of these types of uh, assumptions that we, well, 
that's a, I won't get down that path. I'll just say that <clears throat> their versions of what you might call feminism or social justice, even because they have those elements, I'm, and I said this on other videos, they're they're a lot different in how they play out in their land, and which is is Osalan's fundamental root assumption is that consensual. And I don't know how he would word this, but essentially, consens consensual is an exchange between humans that even if they're not equal, they have an assumption at the very least of degrees of parity at least, that they perform as if there is parity at the very least, that have that consensual exchange that this is the goal. And to get there, the path is not through forcing or coercing your values on others. It's to create the opportunity for these types of uh, consensual type of institutions, if you will, to emerge. So they have, for instance, they encourage and support as much as they can the the idea of worker co worker owned businesses as opposed to capitalist type systems, even though they don't do anything to stop people from having capitalist type businesses within their lands. But they encourage, and there's more and more, it's gradually picking up, but there's more and more folks that are turning to this uh, worker own model. I have my own version of a worker own model that uh, my brother and I developed called participatory ownership, but I'd change that to participatory stewardship because uh, I'm not fully aligned with the word uh, ownership in general, just philosophically, not not in any kind of uh, puritanical way. You know, I understand the usefulness of, of property constructs, but uh, philosophically, I'm against the concept of property in general. <clears throat> and uh, so this is the kind of a bit of the backdrop here. Now, you have this group that uh, nobody really is really caught on to what the Rajavans are doing, the great Rajavan experiment. For everyone, the, the major focus is how these fighters that they have, and they have awesome fighters that have been doing great work as far as eliminating ISIS and a lot of other things, and, <clears throat> and all these... Uh, powers from without america israel russia turkey china more and more players they're all looking if they're looking at rajava at all and by the way all these players are in various ways trust me the rajava is a it's out here in in kind of a kind of a no man's land and in a place that's kind of hard to rule right now and especially under the circumstances that they have been in with the syrian civil war and still other problems that continue to stay. Even Turkey has some fundamental issues, some fundamental economic issues right now. It's it's in a very bad state, and it's and it's largely kind of uh, bogged down as far as its efforts to secure. I mean, by by Turkish Turkish reckoning, they they imagine that they would have quickly conquered Afrin and, and quickly. Well, they did eventually conquer Afrin, and we'll get to that here. Her. This is Operation Olive Branch, is what they called it. Ironically, well, not so ironically. That's how that's how governments work in general. But the Afrin campaign w w it lasted longer than it than it than they would have wanted it to, but uh, certainly not as long as I would have wanted it to. Uh, as you could see, it went from 25 March 2018 to 9 August 2019. So that is uh, that is a, a a long, long song. The main the main combat phase when they actually took <coughs> Afrin was was three two was basically two months but that was expected to be two weeks and then this part this dragged on a lot a lot longer than really and and honestly this part really still isn't done honestly you go at the well we're still i guess you could say we're in the post main it we're, we're still in the uh, insurgency stages so so you can see where where they're targeting here and ultimately what they're looking at is the Turks are looking to solidify for their own race, as they imagine it, literally, their own eth ethnic race of the Turkish race. They are looking to secure the Anatolia. At the very least, they're looking to secure Anatolia, and they would very much like to take parts of Syria, and they would probably like to take parts up here and parts over here and... Well, they'd like to take all of Armenia. Don't don't even Armenia needs to get back. It needs to be no longer Armenia, though. It needs to be absorbed. But they're going to have disputes here. They're going to have disputes with uh, the, yeah they, yeah they pretty much have disputes land disputes with everybody around them. But almost every other 
nation state that's surrounded by uh, that that's smaller in nature and and surrounded by other similar sized nation states is the same circumstance we're kind of spoiled where we live because in america that is because we don't have what do we got we got canada and mexico it's a very different world for the united states we have no idea how spoiled we are how detached we are from the existential churn of uh of human passion and i mean in terms of how human passion in these lands human passion in these lands leads to people getting killed like pretty quickly in america the path from human passion to deaths on the streets it's a lot longer on on the main here in these types of worlds where again you have these smaller nation states and and the lesser these nation states are satellites of larger nation states which are with clear delineations in which maybe the other the competing nation states have a have a general satisfaction in the circumstances then you have even more instability so like uh, this is one of the reasons why i argued that from a pragmatic perspective not from an ideational perspective because i'm not into the whole nation state in the first place but within the nation state circumstance i believe that russia the united states india uh, great britain and uh, japan uh, th these nation states alone I may be forgetting one or two uh, uh, these nation states alone an alliance between these nation states would would do remarkable things to reestablish a lot of peace in a lot of regions that are dealing with some 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 upheavals right now because they don't have uh, bigger uh, daddy mommy masters uh, holding their hands and preventing disincentivizing them from having skirmish wars like we covered for instance going on in azerbaijan and armenia right now these guys are dealing with stuff and you got the turks uh, allegedly putting people in you got the russians uh, kind of like ah. <laughs> uh, and you got the iranians that are allegedly doing stuff and iraqi stuff oh it's it's all a mess man it's all it's all a little big puddle muddle mess and it's 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 uh, at its heart it's a bunch of uh, psychopaths and all these different nation states that are really just trying to uh, keep things together to prefer to preserve what they hope will be their in in many instances their familial dynasties certainly in erdogan erdogan wants to eventually be the seat of of islamic caliphate power someday but the problem is like he's aligned he's got an alliance with iran but yet Iran, they fancy themselves to be the rightful uh, center of caliphate, Islamic caliphate power, if that Islamic world empire thing ever gets created. So, you know, they're like useful allies, but at the same hand, at some point, it's like, all right, bro. All right, it's time for you to like acknowledge. You can acknowledge what? Acknowledge, okay, I'll acknowledge that you're my servant. What'd you say? I'm the caliphate. Oh, you're the caliphate? kind of like that there's a lot of stuff like that going on in the world right now a lot a lot of such weird strange alliances so i think that uh right here james jeffrey you have reason to uh listen to these folks there's uh, hundreds of thousands of human lives at stake the way that i see it also just from my own preference to see how well the rajavans do with this fantastic governance experiment come on america just tell the turks to go go f themselves just tell the turks to go f themselves just so that uh, frico can see democratic confederalism play out i want to see ex especially how much when it's played out how much their race and all these other type of dynamics end up actually being something that ultimately turned out to be useful and my suspicion is they're going to find out that fundamentally it really isn't about the race or the sex the sexual orientation all those things are just all those things are just useful foils for individuals to try to eliminate competition when they are especially in times the more fearful they are uh, the more they'll tend to gravitate into those circumstances and the answer is to give people the power to say no to give people and the rajavans and what they're doing almost well pretty much by necessity they're creating self-sustainability self-empowerment and even the way they structure their, their policing such as that is and their policing truly is looking out for they they, they need the security 
uh, patrolling your neighborhoods at night. You, you're happy to have them. Uh, and it's a man and a woman that go out together. And these folks are trained and serious. And uh, it's, it's doing wonders to create in individuals all types of uh, what I call heuristic institutions of the Rajavans that, uh, God willing, they'll survive and they'll be able to continue even in uh, in some agreement with the Syrian government, so they're still part of the Syrian state, but they are given significant degrees of autonomy. They'll still pay their taxes, whatever. They'll pay their tribute. You got to pay your tribute. Hey, man, you got to pay your tribute. But they'll still be given, and, and they're very careful so far, and I hope they continue in how they use government phraseologies and government everything so they don't look too radical you don't want to end up being like the netherlands where you declare hey man you know uh, i'm gonna get rid of uh, the king the whole kingship we're gonna become a republic and all the kingships around them are like hey man like you got a navy look at, get, take, slap them bitches in the face and then they're worse yeah you don't want that because believe me the minute that the people figure out even these all these states figure out and I, they won't even if they don't trust me if they hear this video they they won't pay attention uh the minute that they hear that these rajavans are 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 really uh, uh creating i mean uh, what, what i wish i could do for the rajavans is give them technologies give them all the open source technologies you can and then all the raw materials that they na can to, to print and do whatever they can to make the crap that they need to have the high techest, awesomest uh, opportunities to build and uh, create self sustainability right where they live. And we have the power, we have the technology. Rojavans could be creating awesome new communities. Rojavans, uh, comment down below if you're from Rojava, because I've got community ideas. I've got these castle community ideas. Seriously. Comment down below if you're from Java, and uh, I'll send you some of my ideas and see what you think. And so, like, I use Adobe Brick, too thick, thick wall kind of. St I use stuff, man. Come on. At any rate, I'll leave you with that. Pay attention. Keep paying attention. This is just no another one of these hotspots. Even if you're, you might very well not have the uh, the, the the preferential vested interest in Rajavans like I do. So you, your opinions may vary and how you interpret this data but at the very least uh pay attention pay attention to rajava pay attention just another one of these flashpoints where you have multiple interests that are uh concentrated on one center uh, uh with uh, one group of uh people being the foil the potential foil uh of all of these large nation state players and with that i say have a great rest of your day because, uh, because why not?